a good catch there, Tom. I like Tom's. Uh, Tom likes to pick Tom's the two show. Tom's discography is is uh, <laughs> kind of. DJ finally has a chance. It's his, it's his hidden DJ, and the garden relates to our founder of National Vegetarian Museum, Miss Kay Stepkin, who is here in the studio. Good morning, Kay. Hi, Katie. Put that closer to you. And, hey, Katie. Uh, yeah, nice to have you. Now, the idea of a vegetarian museum came from whence? <laughs> well, about five years ago, I had given one or two talks on Chicago's vegetarian, what I thought was Chicago's vegetarian history. And then one day, Michael calls me and asks me to be on Live from the Heartland. Yeah, I was going to say, that show. was the last time you were here. After the show, well, the, the couple of talks I'd given before were to small vegetarian groups in the city. Uh -huh. And after I was on Live from the Heartland, I started getting phone calls to talk at different organizations in Look Chicago. At that. What a reach we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in fact, I even got paid for a couple of them which amazed me. Um, Someday we'll have that experience. <laughs> so, um, uh, I, so I thought I knew all about Chicago's history, but I go to the internet, I go to the library, and I start reading, and what I read just amazes me. I was stunned. I thought that I had the first vegetarian business in Chicago, which I had opened in 1971. Turns out, no, we had a vegetarian restaurants in the late 1800s. We Whoa. had a huge presence at the Columbian Exposition or the World's Fair. Sweet. Uh, we had, um, I had been the president of the Chicago Vegetarian Society prior to being on your show the last time. And um, I remember seeing uh, initial corporate papers where it was incorporated in 1943. That was the second incorporation. The Chicago Vegetarian Society first started in the late 1800s in Chicago. Um, we, uh, the society, the, the Chicago Vegetarian Society had a turkey-free Thanksgiving dinner. That started in the late 1800s from a dining group uh, that had started, I believe, out of the University of Chicago. Anyway, I was stunned by the depth and the breadth of our history. So, uh, that's terrific that you're un unfolding, un unearthing that history and putting it together. I love that you brought um, visual uh, aids to the radio show. Um, when we, in, when and if we ever arrive back at the Heartland, we'll show them. But we will put them up on our website too. So right now you are, it's traveling exhibits that that go to public spaces. Yes. All right. Um, so I've been so into vegetarianism for so long that mm -hmm. that I figured that if I didn't know we had a history. Neither does anybody else sure. of, of my generation. And if my contemporaries didn't know, for sure young people don't know. And young people are so important to our movement, our growing, our exploding movement. Um, um, they, the highest percentage of vegans are, are coming from the, the 20s and 30s age group. Sure. Of course, they're our entire future. And, um, and I think it's really Poor important. Babies. <laughs> Well, it, it's important for them to know that that um, that as vegetarians and vegans, that they have a history that, that they're not orphans out there in the world all alone, but that they that they have uh, a big history behind them, and that they can have the support and the wisdom of people who came bef before them, and that they don't have to make the same mistakes that we made. Um, and that's what the museum is about. I'm looking forward to seeing this museum. I just want to share with everybody out there in WUW and Life in the Heartland listening land that Kay was inspirational to me and I think to Katie uh, back when we were thinking about opening a restaurant which culminated with the Heartland Cafe. It was, uh, there were very few places around. There was Sherwin's Health Food Store and there was Kay's Bread Shop. And uh, I hung around both those places uh, picking up ideas and arguing politics over the Middle East with, pay, with Kay. Um, but Kay's been around a, a long time, and we were so grateful that you had the bread shop. Uh, and even for a time, you baked the Heartland bread when our stoves were That's not right. adequate. Ah. <laughs> um, can I ask, Kay, how did you become so committed to the choice of vegetarianism? Because didn't your dad drive a meat truck? <laughs> he did, he did. He was a meat jobber. And um, although he did say to me once that if you were younger, maybe he would be more open to my ideas about food. Look at that. That's so our parents' line. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I'm sorry, so what exactly is your question? How did you make the transition from meat to... Ah, uh, okay. Um, I want to say that the transition to meat, from meat to vegetarian happened overnight. It took me another 30 years to become a vegan. But um, what first prompted me was a book that I had read. Uh, it's called Thunderball. It's a James Bond book. And uh, in the book, uh, Bond is tired, he's run down, he's not sleeping well at night, and his boss um, has a very stern talk with him and insists that he goes to a, um, a health spa, insists on it. And, um, and it was somewhere really beautiful with leggy blondes and brunettes. How did you know that? I don't know. <laughs> Call me Preston. Dad is Preston. <laughs> um, Wait, let her finish, Michael. Hey, just because I raised my hand didn't mean I was button in. I don't know if she was done. Um, and in the cor and in the in the course of this, he gives him a little talk on on how horrible our food is, how uh, how we remove uh, so many nutrients from uh, from wheat uh, put, uh, to make a white bread for. Uh, white flour for bread, and then to go across the prairie originally, I think, so that people white flour wasn't it, so they would last on long journeys. Oh, very good I point. Think, so, check it. And so with the industrial revolution and more yeah, traveling. I'm sorry, I'm just I'm just stuck on, on the notion that the bread shop kitchen uh, goddess <laughs> got her idea from 007. I, I'm I'm really digging that. Isn't it? It just it just, totally. I was in fact I was in Berkeley when that happened. My roommate was out. I had nothing to do one night. I'm going through her books. I like to read, and um, came across this book. And on page nine, there it was. It just uh, I thought that I knew all about health um, at that point because one of my mother my mother had two or three mantras that the whole family lived by, and one of her mantras was, "Your health is the most important thing." And um, nice. she was right. She was right, but what that meant in our family was that um, you go to the dentist twice a year, and if anything hurts, you go to the doctor and you do whatever he tells you. And so I thought I knew all about health, and, um, <laughs> and these, new, these new ideas were very interesting to me. You know, speaking of books, uh, you, we all read Adele Davis, uh, kind of a Bible for people getting into healthy eating. Mm -hmm. And I read somewhere that she had taken acid and written a book about it. And I just want to share that you came today with that book. You found it. You went and looked for it. It's called Exploring Inner Space by Jane Dunlap, which is Adele Davis. Yes. So I'm looking forward to, and I'm sure Katie is too, to reading it. Indeed. And I hope you're people who return books. That yes, so good. she wants it back. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. right now your museum is a series of traveling exhibits, but are yes, you it planning is. to have a place? Are you hoping uh, for a yes. place? Yes, where that's the plan. That place be? That's the plan. So first I figured if I just go talk to people and say how I want this museum and how important it is for our movement, nobody's going to be listening to me. I thought i got to do something spectacular, let them see it, and then I can get some support for it. So what it is, are 12 uh, professionally designed and fabricated panels, each one about three feet wide by seven or eight feet tall. Um, uh, they, they interlock, they can be put together in different configurations to fit different spaces. They take up maybe 250 square feet. Um, and they tell uh, the history, of, I think we entitle it, uh, What It Means to Be Vegetarian. And we go into uh, one panel each on the health aspects, the animal aspects, the environmental aspects. We then go into our history. We had um, uh, ancient, uh, ancient uh, Greece. Uh, Pythagoras was known as the father of vegetarianism back then. And in fact, uh, ancient uh, old um, vegetarians were called Pythagoreans back then. And he, and he was around like 2,500 years ago. Geometrists. <laughs> yes. Um, the, look, under the events on your webpage, there's things like Bantu Fest, Taste of Black Chicago. Are, is that, are those events that you're part of, or are they... I just told our media person about that yesterday oh. when we had a phone meeting, and I forget so her related. explanation. No, that's going to be taken off. Now. Okay, never mind. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. I just got a text from somebody saying the road to health is paved with good intestines. <laughs> that's great. We're going to have to Katie cut this short. Design. Well, no, because it's good that Michael reads us his texts um, <laughs> that he gets live. It's fun. We all do unique we and do. strange things on the show. Um, which it tells, uh, brings us back to how do people find you, how do people find the museum, uh, website, that sort of thing? 
www.vegmuse.org, V-E-G-M-U-S-E dot org. Um, do, you, do you have a, a flight plan, so to speak? I mean, where is the museum yes, going? We do. What place it is, is it? right now? It, it's fifth or sixth library in Chicago. It stays at each venue for one month. That's cool. Um, right now, it is in Wicker Park, Bucktown, yeah. and uh, 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 the next month, August first, it is moving to Oak Park Library. Then it's coming back to Edgewater Library near you. That's uh -huh. maybe when you can see it. Uh -huh. It'll be there in September, then Lakeview. And I saw that you were down at the Cultural Center, too, at uh, one point. Uh, no. Oh. No. Okay. I, well, I the wrong thing. I, I would like to be, if anyone who has a connection to them is listening. Huh. Very good. It <laughs> would be a good place to be. Well, um, but to finish your question, um, I have an arbitrary goal in my mind of February 1st. At that point, we will have been around for a year. I would love to find a permanent spot by that time. We will then take this traveling exhibit and start sending it around the country in the care of different vegetarian organizations. Um, and because we have all these connections now, museum connections in Chicago, we can build a special panel for the group we send it to, either about their city's history, about their organization, whatever. Okay, Stepkin, thank you so much for coming down this morning. And the Vegetarian Museum, how wonderful that you're putting together a national museum in Chicago. Again, a first. Bless your heart. Thank you. Thanks, guys.